Hey, I'm Lisa. I am a coach for moms. I'm a mom of seven gorgeous kids, and I help moms be great moms while pursuing their personal goals and dreams at the same time. Today, this guy's joining me, my husband, Josh Canning. Hello. And we're going to talk about how to love someone with depression and anxiety. So we've been married for about five years when depression really showed up. And it showed up in a very fierce way. It was very clear to me that this was not just him needing a vacation or him needing like mm -hmm. time away or anything like that. It mm -hmm. was inability to get out of bed, inability mm -hmm. to find pleasure in all the normal things that normally he would find pleasure in. It was a with total withdrawal for me and the kids. It was just like clearly very something different. So what I'm gonna do is put for you in the cards some videos that sort of can catch you up in our story. But today we really wanna focus on some of the questions that we both get commonly asked, particularly on this particular video. I have an FAQ video that really dives into um, just, I guess, some of the fundamental challenges, um, but also how to overcome them. Yeah, so I follow Lisa's channel pretty closely and I read the comments and, I, and I've noticed that on that particular video Lisa was talking about, uh, a lot of people would ask uh, about how to um, love a spouse with depression, mental illness, anxiety, when it seems like um, it's it's not getting through, like it's not, it's not reaching them uh, and nothing's working working. Mm. Um, what would you say, Elise, uh, if someone was to ask you, how do I love this person who has depression, anxiety, mental illness, etc.? So we were going on a date just this past, like yesterday, um, and I turned to the kids in the car and I said, guys, why do you think mommy and daddy always go on our weekly date night? And our oldest child said, what did he say again? Uh, he said, uh, so you can keep on loving each other. So you can keep on loving each other. And so what I would say is whether depression happens like and you already know it when you get married or it happens like it did to us sort of part way through and you're kind of surprised by it that like this is just an evolution of love like love requires work and so that this is just mm -hmm. a new circumstance the same way that if you had a child i say this all the time if you had a child who was like diabetic and you had to do things like give him needles or um, could take him to regular checkups or what have you. Or if you had a child in a wheelchair that required all kinds of different like modifications to your home and your car and the way you do life and the way you travel, like you wouldn't love them any less. You just love them and you find ways to adapt and you find ways to do life different. I think that's like a really key piece is you've got to find ways to do life different mm -hmm. and that you can't almost focus on fixing them. That's something that I definitely did before. I was just trying to fix him. Mm -hmm. You kind of can't do that. Certainly you can help them. Certainly you can encourage them to like, whatever, like get help. And I, I really believe that, I don't want to say that people can be cured of mental illness because I don't think it's that simple. It's not like, I just don't think it's that simple. You can't just take a pill and then all of a sudden you're completely like fine. But I do think that you can change behavior and change thought patterns. I really do. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. So kind of embrace the challenge, embrace the work. Um, would you say also on the, on the topic of the date thing, mm -hmm. um, embrace like um, some alone time with your spouse? Um, because yeah. a lot of times, like I know from, from what I've heard from, from you with your coaching with moms, uh, a lot of times couples, when mental illness or not, they struggle to prioritize date time, mm -hmm. like date night. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I wonder for the person with mental illness who sometimes needs to get out of their own head and get out of the, the house and get into a place where they can almost just, you know, let their hair down and be heard and, mm -hmm. and air things out. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if that's even more particularly important. What would you say? Yeah, and I, from the, from the not that I'm an expert, but from the um, experience I do have in learning about depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. um, particularly, noise and mm. clutter and um, a sense of, a, I guess, a lack of, or an inc increase in intensity, like all these things can be a trigger, like a big time trigger for someone with mental illness. And Again, I think that the person with mental illness can learn different ways to cope um, and grow in their ability to handle those triggers, but definitely 
removal of the triggers. Again, like mental illness or not, I think all parents need to have very regular breaks where it's quiet and not intense and where you can just focus on each other and the relationship. And I think especially where mental illness is concerned, you need more constant check-ins. Like mm. emotional support requires talking like and it requires talking in a way that you can actually finish your sentence like you know just again in the comments let me know if you understand the challenge that comes when you're trying to have a just coherent conversation between grown-ups and you're interrupted 500 times like just let me know in the comments if you understand what that feels like with mental illness there's also things that people don't want to admit so josh let me ask you and mm. this might be like painful to share or maybe you don't want to share it but mm -hmm. like what are the common inaccurate things that go through your head mm. commonly uh yeah these yeah this is really under the hood isn't it <laughs> um that i'm unlovable um that i am a burden uh, to myself and to my family that i'm uh, a bad husband and a bad father um that i uh am just causing uh, more uh, harm than good yeah. uh, in the world. And I know that this is not real, but mm -hmm. this is, these are feelings that, uh, you know, if I'm in a particularly anxious or depressed phase, these are feelings that are real. Um, these are, like the feelings are real. They, they may not mm -hmm. reflect reality, but these are feelings that are real. Mm -hmm. And they have to go um, checked. They can't go unchecked because mm -hmm. they can just lead to this kind of, you know, spiral of, of downward thinking. And this is like, uh, perhaps you can tell by my emotional reaction, like when I hear that, I this is what I believe is the duty and the job of the person who loves. Like this is a way to love someone who has mental illness. You have to remind them of who they really are. Mm -hmm. So when he tells me something like that, what I try to do, although in the beginning I didn't do this very well, in the beginning I would just be like, oh my gosh, why do you keep thinking like this? Like, just stop it. Like, that's not helpful. So I would say, number one, like, you just accept what they said. Like, like oh, wow, that must be really hard. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wow, like, that must feel really awful. Like, without judgment, you just sort of empathize mm -hmm. and accept mm -hmm. what they've said. And then I really do think it is the duty and the role of the person who loves the person with anxiety to say, like, you know, you know that's not real. Like, do you know that's not real? Like... <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you know how much we love you? Do you know how much, you know, you bring joy to our lives? Do you know mm -hmm. how much we care about you? Do you know how much the kids love you? You know, all those things. So I really mm -hmm. do believe that um, it, is the, it is the duty. It is, this is where like the love has to come through. Mm -hmm. But here's, a, here's what is challenging. And I actually want to pull up a YouTube comment. So, mm -hmm. so his wife has depression and it's really hard or anxiety and it's really hard. I try to take the pressure off by really helping with the kids' daily chores and much more. She points the finger at me constantly and tells me I'm doing those things wrong. Even the smallest things like wiping the counters down after I do all the dishes, she'll yell at me in front of the kids because I don't do it right. Then we get into a fight because I didn't like the way she would react. Do you have any recommendations on how to handle that situation? I say I'm sorry, but it isn't good enough. It's really hard. So I bring that comment up because I know in the past, it was difficult for me to do what I just said to do. Like literally say these positive things or to not, no, not even positive things, to say these accurate things <laughs> because I was feeling so challenged by the reality of things like that. There were times much earlier when I didn't know what depression was and I hate to admit this, but I'm going to, I mean, we've already talked about this a lot. Um, but I just felt like it was a, like, not that he was a burden, but that the mental illness was a burden. For sure. Like, it's, it's hard for me to say that out loud. But, like, it, before it felt like a big time burden. I was mm -hmm. pregnant and, like, small kids. And there was a time when I just felt, like, doomed. Like, this is our life and I'm going to be a single mother. Like, mm -hmm. I just felt, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. But then as I began to understand mental illness and I began to understand the strategies and the things that you can do to thrive with mental illness, I began to change, obviously, my mindset around it. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that comment and that it can be difficult. It can feel very difficult to be the person who um, is trying to remain, I guess, grounded, grounded in reality. That mm -hmm. can be very hard to do. And I think what I would, again, suggest is that like you got to dig deep within yourself 
and find that love you have for the person. Mm. Like all the reasons why you appreciate them, all the reasons why you um, think they're amazing. Like you've got to remind yourself of that. Mm. <laughs> you've got to like, this is why I think dating is so important because you are reminded of that. You can be reminded of that on a regular basis when you are spending like intimate time together. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to say that it felt like a burden. What's, what's the challenge is, and for those of you watching who struggle with mental illness yourself, you might feel like that's a harsh uh, statement because you identify with the burden yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And when I say I felt like a burden or I feel like a burden, um, it's hard for me to dis dissociate the mental illness from myself. But for the one who's loving you, they're loving you, but they're also feeling like this state, this this thing that just showed up in your lives together is a burden. And I think it's, I think we have to be honest and be, say, and be okay with that, that it is something that is going to be carried actually by the two of you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. For me, it's uh, it's in me. For you, you're loving loving me, but this thing is, is here, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I think we have to be honest about that. But I think that's also a really important distinction in this conversation of how do you love the person, that their illness is not them. Like, their illness does not define the core of who they are. I think that is very important to note. Mm -hmm. Their illness is like anything. Like if I broke my ankle, mm -hmm. it would be super unfair of my spouse to be like, ugh, you're such a burden because you broke your ankle. Right. That would be unfair. Right. And so I just really believe that the two have to be sort of, um, just not equated, that might not be accurate, but just, it's an illness. Mm -hmm. Mental health is illness, like yeah. it's health. And you, like, can, and you can remind them that it doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. Like this is not what defines mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I accept this in you, but this mm -hmm. is not what defines mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. you, know? Mm -hmm. you know, going back to that comment about what am I supposed to do, you know, the commenter on your, on your mm -hmm. YouTube channel about when my wife gets all upset and she doesn't like how I do things and mm -hmm. it sounds like, a, like anxiety talking, you know. And it's also tough if, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, frustration people might have with their spouse mental illness is they won't, their spouse won't admit the mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But in those kinds of cases, and I know this might not seem fair, but you might want to have a bit of a toolbox of um, questions or responses that you can um, use to diffuse the situation. Um, so I have a friend who uh, is married to somebody with uh, extreme anxiety, and I've seen him use this phrase, what would be helpful right now? Um, mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's kind of interesting because it mm -hmm. almost gives some power back to the person who's yeah. maybe not acting um, yeah. rationally themselves. They, yeah. they might be blowing up a little bit, but it's like, what would be helpful right now? Is it fair to say that anxiety, like, craves control? Like, like is that fair? So, like, the, 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 the not to, you know, not to analyze this one commenter, but... Mm -hmm. Is she possibly coming at the wiping of the counters because she really wants to control something? It's hard to say, right? It's mm -hmm. our, 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 our psychology is tangled and convoluted. Um, but I don't know. I sometimes have the phrase, uh, like, my anxiety loves a dance partner. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like it, mm -hmm. it finds something and then it just wants to go. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be the lack of control of the situation in the home or it could be a lack of control at work or it could mm -hmm. be just, you know, this surprise or that surprise. And then before you know it, anxiety is just, you know, dancing and running wild. Um, and so, yeah, that's tough. It's, uh, it's tough. So what else, Lise? Um, you know, so you've been married to me and there, and there wasn't mental illness for a while. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there it was. And it's become kind of a reality in our life. Mm -hmm. What's different? How, how is it different loving a person with anxiety and depression versus, you know, versus not? What, what's di what cha had to change in the way that you loved your spouse once this became a reality? That's a good question. At first, I was going to say nothing. Because really, in a way, you love somebody, or you should love somebody, regardless of whatever faults and failings and things that you don't like about them. So in a way, it hasn't changed. But what I would say is that it's a much more mature love. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm in this for the long haul. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There is no, like... For me, it's it's not, I'm not, there's no, not trading in any kind of model. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I, I'm in this. And so I think when you can commit and say that, I'm in this for the long haul, regardless of anything, 
that does take a different like like maturity is the best word I can describe like like it's a it's a much more um it's a very deep like kind of love I don't know like and, and it's it's <sighs> to commit when it's hard is a choice mm -hmm. just like to show up in a way that is whatever positive or um graceful or whatever like is a choice like i have choice in how i respond to mental illness in our marriage i did not always choose the graceful mm -hmm. <laughs> the graceful um response but i would say that as a result of doing a lot of hard work and that hard work coming out of a love for you um our marriage is stronger and better and like resilient I mm. think that's another thing that I've really been reflecting on mm. is resilience in marriage and how that has come as a result of me mental illness mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we have become such a resilient couple um, and there are many benefits to being resilient like mm. I in my opinion like I could just be saying this to myself to comfort myself I suppose but I do believe like just Resilience is necessary to deal with moving homes and making big life decisions and launching a book and all the emotional ups and downs that go with all of that. And I really do believe that the challenges, the significant challenges that we faced mm -hmm. have helped prepare us to be resilient um, in order to thrive in the things that we're currently doing. Mm -hmm. And I just, like, I love this expression and I don't know who to attribute this to, I apologize. I wanna say it might be Bob Proctor, but that life is not done to you, it's done for you. If you actually know who I can properly quote, let me know in the comments below. Life is not being done to you, it's being done for you. And so while I definitely didn't believe this earlier, now I 100% believe that this has strengthened our marriage and really helped us in thriving in life, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that? Yeah, well, I was going to ask you because I know uh, for myself, I've written about um, how depression, you know, is is this tough thing, but it does have upsides, mm -hmm. um, which sounds crazy. It doesn't even still like, you know, have, with so much, I guess, uh, what's the word like miles in the in the rearview mirror, I still wouldn't say that I would choose to have a depression or anxiety. Um, but there are things that come out of it that you learn about yourself, um, that you learn about others in the ways in which you allow yourself to be uh, loved by others in the mm -hmm. way in which you begin to regard yourself a little bit more humbly or small or, mm -hmm. or just take yourself more lightly. Um, there are things that help you grow as a person about having mental illness that you wouldn't, you wouldn't face if you didn't. So what I was gonna ask you actually is, is kind of on the same line of what you're talking about in terms of resilience and things, but would you say, how, like, how would you say loving somebody with mental illness has helped you grow as a person? You know how when you have a baby, you're all of a sudden like, oh my gosh, it's like the cure for selfishness? I think it's kind of similar. Like, this is kind of similar. You get, like, a baby, I'm not comparing you to baby. I kind Sounds of like am. I kind of am. But, like, when you have a baby, you might get frustrated that, oh, they're waking up again, I'm so tired, da, da, da. But you take care of them. You don't let the baby cry, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, when the baby has another blowout up the back and you need like 700 wipes, you know, you're, you're, you're like, you might be inconvenienced and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to clean up another, oh, and it's all over here, da, da, da. But you still clean it up because you want that baby to be comforted, right? So not that you're a newborn infant. <laughs> But it definitely sounds like I'm comparing you to a newborn <laughs> infant, and I definitely am. But it's okay, we'll go with it for now. <laughs> go with me here. I want you to thrive. And so I find a place within myself to be serving, like like to to be mm -hmm. helpful. Mm -hmm. Like the same way that when a baby cries in the middle of the night, you get out of bed. You might not be happy about it, and definitely there were times that I was not exactly happy about, you know, I don't know, okay, here we go, we're going to change something else, whatever. But you do it out of love. Like, just think about that for a minute. 
you don't let a baby cry. You just don't. I, I don't know, at least most people like wouldn't just let a baby cry. You pick that baby up, you shush mm -hmm. it, you try. Mm -hmm. You might be really overwhelmed in the pursuit of helping the baby, but like you want to comfort them and you do it out of a place of like somehow the, 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 the strength comes, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think a marriage is the same and I think mental illness is the same mm -hmm. where I think that you can be given the strength and the grace. I believe that comes from the Holy Spirit and from God giving me the grace and the strength to handle it. And if I can just go on a small tangent, for me and my worldview and my understanding of things, that is 100% how we have gotten through all of this. Like God and his hand in all of this, he has never forsaken us, even when I feel like he has. Mm -hmm. I, he has never. When I look back at the history of our marriage, like there was always something to learn. And even if it felt horrible, we did come out the other end changed and better for it. Mm -hmm. I just believe that so, like, with so much passion. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I don't know what, what else to say to that. I don't know what... what yeah. Yeah, <laughs> You're some, not a baby. <laughs> I know, some people will take that you're analogy not, the wrong way. You're but, not a but, newborn baby. but you know what? I, I, I'm very cool with that because um, it's an analogy and, and it makes me think of we have a, a, a one year old right now, um, Phoebe, who is just unbelievable. And the love that's poured out on her from those around her is unbelievable. Yeah. And when you love a baby, you realize, like, it, you kind of marvel. And it's like, they do nothing for you, really. I mean, except be themselves. And it, but they elicit love and you just want to pour it right. out on them. And, um, you know, there may be moments where it's hard to remember <laughs> what you love about your spouse if they're really in the midst of all this stuff, you know? You might be, you, I know you've said before, it was like, where, where did my spouse go? Um, I remember describing it from my perspective, it was like, where did my personality go? <laughs> Who, whose personality yeah. do I have right now? Right. How come I'm not making jokes? How come I struggle to uh, even go out and have social contact? Like, who is this person? Right. Um, and, and, you know, you reference a spiritual sort of view of things, but it, it, when I love a baby like that, regardless of what they provide, when you love a uh, ill person, regardless of what they provide, it allows us to love as we think God loves, as we believe God loves, mm -hmm. uh, independent of what we do mm -hmm. or earn or whatnot, mm -hmm. but just, just by nature of being made, in a beautifully, fearfully, and wonderful way. It really does, like, not to get too philosophical or, like, existential here, but, like, it does present interesting things to think about, about, like, a person's value and, like, what it means to be deserving of love. Again, not to get super deep, but, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it does present those things. Like, right. do I love you because of what you produce for me? Right. Like, that's kind of shallow. Like right. if I just loved you because you were like good looking and like you brought money home and like, I don't know, like you, you, whatever, like just like, because you produce things, right. that's a really shallow version of love. Right. But right. if I can love you like to use this analogy again, like, like a newborn infant who doesn't really do anything to earn the love, they just exist. I think that's an interesting thing to, talk about like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what does it mean to be deserving of love mm -hmm. and like do we catch ourselves almost in like he has to do certain things for me to love him mm -hmm. like is that mm -hmm. fair mm -hmm. i don't know this is way deeper than i thought the conversation yeah, was no, gonna go it's good but... to go deep right it, it's good. and i am crying and it has made my false eyelash like come on <laughs> so just fyi if i look like a person with i don't know just we're just gonna keep going hey we're going raw um what was i gonna say um this i know at times so we've dealt with sickness in different ways in our marriage mm -hmm. when we were when we were newlyweds we dealt with uh, a cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. for lisa you know mm -hmm. which is you know thank god way in the rear view mm -hmm. um but um, in those moments when it feels like, how are we going to get past this? We think to the vows, right? In mm -hmm. sickness and health and good times and bad, for richer, for poor, for better, for worse. Mm -hmm. And you realize that, yeah, like if we were just do, saying yes to the feelings, then it would be hard to go for the long haul. Mm -hmm. But the resilience that you were talking about comes in recognizing that, you know, uh, we're, we're, failure is not an option. We're going to, we're going to get through this, right?
<laughs> what else um, tips and tricks have you learned that you would say is part of my toolbox, my strategy in loving somebody with depression or mental illness? Don't try to change them. Mm -hmm. I think that was a really like, and I think that's that's a lesson we all need to learn in marriage. Like I think I, I think we would have fought a lot less in the first year of our marriage if I wasn't always like, can't you do things my way? Just a little bit. There are a lot of fights. Oh my gosh, so many. We're that's both like, out of that's issues. my next book. It's like how to not how to survive your first year of marriage. Oh my gosh, what not to do. But um but yeah, I, I think like there were times when I didn't understand what mental illness was and I just thought this was behavior and that you could just change the behavior mm -hmm. and that it wasn't really influenced by anything. Like meaning it was just like, you're acting like this and that's really annoying. Mm -hmm. Like it, 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 there wasn't like these very like complex underlying things impacting those behaviors. So yeah, I would say like, don't try to change them but encourage them to get the support and help they need. And so what do I mean by that? Obviously by seeing a doctor, by doing regular visits to a counselor or a psychotherapist or therapist, whatever, um, and by doing the work. So there's things like that we all need to do, like cognitive behavioral therapy, which is, and like mindfulness, like it's such a buzzword now to talk about mindfulness, but just literally what I think we all need to do, because everyone has a level of anxiety I, and I describe it as like an elastic band. And sometimes some people can exist with the elastic band pulled like this, you know what I mean? Pulled, pulled, pulled. And they can exist like that. I have a fairly high threshold for anxiety. I can be in that place of tension for a long time. Whereas other people, like they just with, snap. Yeah, with clinical anxiety. They're, they're you not just gonna, snap, like, like you pull it and then it's gone. And then there's no more coping. However, sometimes with medication, with proper um, regular counseling, with, you know, checking in, whatever, you can, you can exist. A person with clinical anxiety can exist at various degrees of tension of the elastic. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a nice analogy for um, people to understand. Like, you can't change the threshold of their elastic, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Analogies are so interesting. Mm -hmm. Are they annoying? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I use them a lot. But... Don't try to change them. Don't try to change them to be more like you. Like, mm -hmm. don't try to be like, well, I can cope with all of this anxiety. Mm -hmm. Why can't you just get on the train? Come mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not fair. Yep. It's just not fair. But you referenced cognitive behavioral therapy. And for those who aren't familiar, it's really just recognizing there is choice within our own thought patterns. Mm -hmm. So we could get, you know, an example is you could be... Um, you know, stuck in traffic and mm -hmm. you begin to, to seethe and get really upset and, you know, oh, why, why can't the city build better roads and what, why are all these other people here getting whatever? Um, where instead, you can say, well, I guess I'm going to be here for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. well, I wonder what would be a good radio station to listen to or mm -hmm. what would be a great thing to think about or, you mm -hmm. know, um, maybe that's where you bring in your meditation or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so maybe in, in loving somebody with mental illness, you might find ways to ask them questions that might help them. So again, not trying to change them, not trying to remove everything, mm -hmm. but ask them questions that might help them think a little bit differently about the situation. And then, and maybe we'll wrap it up here-ish, mm -hmm. unless you have something else burning, like mm -hmm. a burning other thing, mm -hmm. so that I can take this eyelash off and not be so distracted <laughs> by it. But I do think that you have to do, as the person supporting them, you've got to do this CBT, this mindfulness on like yourself, meaning you can't take everything personally. And this is also, I think, again, mm -hmm. goes beyond mental illness. Like just in general, I think everyone in life would get a lot further along by not taking things so personally, really and truly. Just like, and so when something happens, like the comment from the, um, my YouTube viewer, so if that happened with us, so if I was cleaning the kitchen and then Josh was frustrated that I didn't clean the kitchen, you know, well, I would hope i'm not saying that i would do this all the time but i would hope that i would be able to pause if i was if i if i was behaving as the most idle version of myself is what i'm trying to say i would pause and i would go like is something triggering what he's saying that's what i would say in my head like i would literally just stop i wouldn't respond i would say is something triggering what he said is he overwhelmed right now are there other things going on will it help the situation if i get frustrated like, that's what I would hope I would say. And then I would probably just finish what I was doing, be like, thank you for your feedback. Not saying that that's an easy thing to do in that moment, but thank you for your feedback. And then remove myself from the situation. 
And then later on when it's not intense, I think that's the key too. Mm. Later on when it's not intense, you say, hey, earlier in the kitchen in, in front of the kids, you were getting, it seemed like you were getting quite upset with the way I was wiping the counters. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that a little bit? And then wait, mm. just wait. Mm. They might be like, no, I don't want to talk about that right now, whatever. And then be at peace with that. Like, even though it might frustrate you, but just be at peace with that. And then maybe a little bit later, you can bring it up again. So I'm not trying to say you're a doormat mm -hmm. when you are the person supporting, mm -hmm. but I think you're strategic. Like, you're just strategic at finding non-intense moments. I don't know. What do you think about that? It's very wise. I don't know. It makes a lot of sense. We've been doing this a long time. <laughs> I don't know. Any other final thoughts? I just want to say to the person out there loving a person with anxiety, depression, etc. you know, God bless you. I know it's not an easy walk, and you're not always going to feel like you're being seen and that your hard work mm. and your sacrifice is being seen. Mm. Um, and that's tough. Mm. Um, but I know you're out there and I appreciate it. And, uh, and I appreciate all the hard work you do in our family mm. and how you put up with the challenges that my mental illness brings. Mm. So thank you for that. I love you. Really and it's said what it is. It's because I love him. Like there's no other response. Like mm -hmm. it's because I love you. Mm -hmm. You. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you too. Yeah. You. <laughs> And just, you made me think of one thing, Josh. Mm. Um, I'm in a private Facebook group, totally private. Um, don't ask me to join it, sorry. It's, it's a totally private group um, for people who support spouses with mental illness. And it is a source of great comfort and consolation to me. Um, people post things in there. They're very honest, they're very vulnerable. Um, like, and, and it, you need that. You mm. need to find people who understand your path, like with supporting someone with mental illness, because like it can be very isolating. You can't walk it alone. You cannot, you really cannot in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you can um, gain insight and experience from people who are further along the journey than you, it will give you hope. Mm -hmm. I really do believe that. So one of the things that we didn't, you know, touch deeper on that I could have spoken about at great length is how do you like take care of yourself as the spouse who supports someone? Because that is such an essential piece. We touched on it a little bit, um, but I could talk about that at great length. And I've got some other videos. So I have made for you a playlist that I will put for you right here in the cards. And so go on over there and I'll see you on the other side.